Here, what the firm does is just uh, the objective of the firm is just to max profit uh, by choosing, of course, and the number of uh, producers at any point in time. Okay, so that's going to be our third objective. Uh, and so how do we solve such a maximization? Well, it's particularly easy here because we're trying to maximize the function, there are no constraints, you know, so we don't need to introduce a like range or anything like this. Um, so we can look, you know, when you have a maximization, you always need to kind of look a little bit at the function we're going to maximize, which here is a profit function. So let's just do a quick check of what's happening with that function. So you know that a profit function at zero is equal to zero. Uh, obviously, you know, if this is zero and this is zero, the profits are zero. You can see that the profit function is going to be uh, a concave function. Um, so why? Because you can see that here, if you have alpha that's less than one, the production function a times n alpha is concave, and then you subtract a linear element from a concave function, you still have a concave function. Okay. Um, so for alpha strictly less than one, we know that the function is uh, is going to be concave. Right. So uh, so here we are not really interested in the case uh, n is equal uh, to zero. Of course. So here what we are looking for, uh, if you're a firm, uh, so we are looking to maximize um, that function, and we are looking for an interior solution. That is a solution with the firm. Uh, hire some workers, otherwise it's not very, uh, it's not very interesting. Um, so we're trying to, uh, we're trying to find uh, some n positive that maximizes our function, and we've seen the function is concave. So the result that key result that we know from analysis uh, is that if you have a concave function, a necessary solution, a necessary condition, uh, excuse me, to find that uh, the maximum of the global maximum um, of uh, your concave function is that the derivative, the first derivative of the function is zero. That's a necessary condition to find uh, a maximum of a concave function, and because the function is concave, it's also a sufficient condition. So we just need to find such uh, a point where the derivative is zero. If the derivative is zero, we know that we find the global maximum of our function, and we also know that that maximum is unique. Um, so, a necessary and sufficient condition to find the max Of pi n, that's that pi prime of n is equal to zero. Okay, uh, so I think the derivative of zero is always a necessary uh, condition to find an interior uh, extremum, you know, a maximum or a minimum. But when the function is concave, uh, it guarantees us that where the derivative is zero, you not only have a maximum; it's never going to be. Uh, it's never going to be. A minimum, and in addition, um, you know that that maximum will be unique, so you let, you found a global maximum to your function. Okay, so we're trying to find uh, the point where the derivative of the profit function is zero. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to uh, figure out at what level uh, of employment uh, the derivative gets to zero. So we're solving pi prime of n is equal to zero. So using the expression for pi that just showing you again was here. So we get that a times alpha times n alpha minus 1 minus w 1 plus tau of theta has to be equal to 0. This I just uh, take the derivative of the function that I have here. I have a linear component and a concave component, so this is very easy to take the derivative. Right. So I need to have this equal to 0. 